Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I had a whole bunch of people send me this story, including Ed, Eric, and Richard. Thank you very much. And it's good news, but unfortunately it happened because of a technicality. Uh, so any win's a good one, but things have got to get better. Court orders return a $300,000 that state police seized during a Pennsylvania traffic stop. So they took the man's money. Courts ordered them to give it back, but not because the seizure under civil asset forfeiture made no sense, but simply because of the issue regarding the traffic stop. So uh, John B. wrote this for Penn Live, and the Commonwealth Court is ordered to return a $300,000 that state police seized from a California man during a traffic stop on I-80 in Union County four years ago. The ruling Thursday reversed the county court decisions, plural, also require, uh, requires the return of the man's cell phone that was taken from him back in 2020. So right before COVID, the man was driving through Pennsylvania in a rental vehicle with his cell phone and with some money. The following is taken from the court opinion. A trooper of the Pennsylvania State Police stopped a westbound rental SUV for speeding, not using a turn signal and changing lanes, and other violations. So a series of traffic violations. They appear to be fairly minor, but, you know, speeding, uh, lane changes, and others. The trooper became suspicious when he asked the driver what his travel plans were, and he thought the answers were too vague. It turns out that the trooper also got his hands on the rental agreement for the SUV, and it didn't look to the trooper like the rental agreement quite coordinated with the travel plans, so he suspected something was going on. Now, he did not see anything in the SUV and nothing was ever found suspicious during a pat-down of the driver. So the officer can see inside the SUV, doesn't see anything in plain view. He later pats down the driver, finds nothing suspicious but that cell phone, and then asked, can we search your vehicle? So during a consensual search, the trooper found a large amount of currency in a suitcase and in a paper bag that were seized because... The trooper suspected it was related to unlawful activity, $300,000. Now, a corporal arrived to assist and told the driver he needed to follow them to the state police barracks to see what a drug detection dog would do with their money. So he did as directed when he arrived at the barracks, was given his Miranda warnings. When questioned, he said he was taking the money to Denver, Colorado to buy a farm. He's going to buy a farm. He signed a form acknowledging the currency belonged to him, and since it was, or intended to be, used in exchange for a controlled substance, it was subject to forfeiture. Now, I think that's oddly written. I don't think he actually admitted those things. I think the form said, I claim it belongs to me, but the state says this, therefore you understand that's why we're taking it. So he filed a suppression motion. In February of that same year, claiming the currency and phone were unlawfully seized because the circumstances surrounding the vehicle stop did not give rise to probable cause to do those things pursuant to the Forfeiture Act. Keep in mind that the courts have consistently ruled that if the police pull you over for a traffic infraction, that stop should only last as long as necessary to deal with that infraction unless something else pops up. So obviously, if they'd walked up to this guy's car and seeing somebody in the back seat who was bound and gagged with a bag over their head, they could say, okay, this stop's going to take longer than 15 minutes. But <laughs> when they see absolutely nothing else, okay, you can ask the driver's license, registration, that kind of information, right? Insurance, uh, paperwork for a rental van. Uh, and then they can say, okay, um, we're going to write you a ticket for those things. But to start doing things like, okay, we want to start searching your vehicle, and see what, you know, see what we you know, get when we're fishing. So he filed that suppression motion, and a county judge denied the motion as premature, which the man then appealed, and the Commonwealth Court vacated the order and remanded the case back to county court for further proceedings. Following a county court hearing on the motion to suppress, it was denied in December of 2021. The following month, the prosecution filed a motion to forfeit, pointing out an ion scan of the currency alarmed for high levels of cocaine. So they tested the money, and apparently the money was high. As many of you know, they could pull money out of your wallet right now, or purse, whichever you prefer, 
and there's a chance that it would hit for drugs because that's just how prevalent that stuff is, and that's also how much your money gets around. The forfeiture motion also claimed the man's phone contained pictures and videos of marijuana and hemp growing operations and conversations regarding money transfers. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with discussing a money transfer. It didn't say they were discussing how to launder money or how to structure money. They're just discussing how to transfer money. And I've had so many people ask me about how to transfer money. Uh, and I'm a lawyer, but I'm not giving them advice on how to break the law. I've had many, many people ask me, is this illegal? Is that illegal? That's what people ask attorneys. And so if this guy is being asked to take money cross-country by somebody who's unaware of civil asset forfeiture, apparently, uh, to go buy a farm, uh, I can understand them discussing what's the best way for us to get $80,000 out there. What, what is the best way to do that? This is obviously not the best way, but that's the discussion. There was testimony at one of the hearings that the man had told the trooper he picked up the currency from an unknown Asian male and was taking it to Denver on behalf of a friend who lives in Columbus, Ohio. And by the way, the man in the story is Asian, so that's part of the story. A Union County judge granted the forfeiture motion and dismissed the man's request for the return of the property and the money. In reversing those decisions, the Commonwealth Court found that the trooper's authority to detain this man ended when he completed the investigation into the infractions that caused the traffic stop. That's it. This is, this is a really simple matter. Now, interestingly, by doing that, they don't have to reach the next question, which is what happens to his money. Because the money was seized wrongfully after the stop was prolonged, they got to give it back. Trooper neither observed nor smelled drugs or alcohol, did not see anything in plain view, and had discovered the man's driver's license was valid, and he had no criminal history. There's nothing unusual about the stop, except the fact that the guy's got all this money on him. The return of property action became moot when the seizure of the currency and phone was suppressed, the appellate court noted. And so a lot of people are going to notice and say, wait a second. I think I heard about one, tra uh, one hearing, uh, another hearing, another hearing, and then finally he won at this hearing. Now, I could be wrong in my counting, but that looks like four. The reason I'm pointing that out is that means that, besides the fact this whole story started back in January of 2020, there are four court appearances here. Those court appearances involve an attorney showing up, filing a brief, making an argument, doing tons of research, all kinds of stuff. And it's expensive. It's expensive. Now, I'm not going to hazard a guess as to what an attorney would charge for four hearings, three of them on appeal, or two of them on appeal, I guess. Um, but it, it's going to be a, a good amount of money. And as I've mentioned before, one of the reasons that they get away with this so often is that it's diseconomical. It's uneconomical for most people to pursue this. So let's suppose they took your $10,000 or your $20,000. You call up an attorney and you go, hey, look, I, I think that I get this money back because of technicalities regarding the traffic stop. And the attorney might go, yeah, I think you're right. But you understand that we're still going to lose a few times. And that's the sad part, is that it takes a court on appeal or a Supreme Court to point out the obvious, because the number of people in my audience, I suspect a majority of the people watching this video right now know that the courts have ruled that if you get pulled over for a traffic infraction, the length of the stop, there's no bright line, it's not exactly this many minutes or exactly that minutes, but it, it, it is whatever's reasonable for the officer to conduct an investigation on the reason he pulled you over. And if nothing else crops up, then that stop should end when that investigation is over and that ticket's either written or the warning's given. And we talked about the old two-step where some states used to allow officers to start walking back and go, oh, Colombo, oh, one more thing. And they turn around and come back and claim that was a new traffic stop. It's absurd. It's absurd. And so here the court said, we're not even going to reach the issue of civil asset forfeiture. But we're going to point out that that stop should have ended before you started nosing around in the guy's car looking for things to grab. And so they grabbed his money and his cell phone. And <laughs> what's weird is I've, I've become so jaded to these stories that I flinched when I read cell phone. <laughs> $300,000? Eh, cell phone? Oh, my gosh, they took a cell phone. You know, and, and that's, that's, that's how attached we are to our cell phones uh, and how important they are. 
As for what they found on his cell phone, I'd be curious because um, I, got, I got news for you. Right now, if you were to search my cell phone for all the things like if I've searched on Google, for instance, <laughs> donkey gymnastics, there'd be all kinds of things on there, which, which are often just a thought pops into my head and I'll Google something. And like, for instance, I routinely Google to double check how to spell words. I want to make sure I spell a word properly in a thumbnail to a story. Um, but if you saw that word out of context, you might go, why is he Googling that? He must know what that means. Yeah, double checking the spelling of it. Okay. Uh, and so y- you don't know these things. And I, you know, I've, I've, I've had it happen before where I was talking to somebody and I saw something they were searching for. I'm like, what's What's that? I'm like, oh, sorry, let me explain that to you. And they got a perfectly good explanation for it. So who knows? Who knows? So I don't put a lot of stock in that. And instead, it's just we, we know what happened here. They pulled the guy over. He's in a rental vehicle. To them, that's suspicious. To us, that's perfectly normal. You know, I, I, I've rented vehicles before. I was not committing crimes when I had them. Okay? I was, I was going someplace where I did not have my car. There you go. Um, so they pull a guy over. He's driving a rental vehicle. He changed lanes without using his blinker, which is not the crime of the century. He may have been speeding, it says, but we don't know how fast he was speeding. Was he speeding 5 over, 10 over, 50 over? We don't know. We don't know. Okay? But they pull him over for those things, and instead of just writing him a stack of tickets, which they could have done, by the way, uh, they start questioning him. They start poking around. They search his vehicle. They find the money. And you might say, but Steve, he consented to the search. Um, I would need to see exactly how that happened because I've seen the say, for instance, um, uh, you know, may I search your vehicle? And when they ask you that way, many people don't know they can say, I'd rather you didn't. Um, so they can make it seem consensual when it really isn't quite. And there are a lot of people who don't know that they can turn that down. But be that as it may, they searched his vehicle, found the money, and said, oh, oh, we found the money. Boom. You can go on your way, by the way. We're just going to take your money and your cell phone. And by the way, if the guy was going to commit a crime, would you really let him go commit the crime now that you have his money? Or do you just assume, hey, we're crime fighters here and we stop the crime by taking his money? (laughs) Oh, you can't detain him for the crime because you don't know what he's going to do. He says he's going to buy a farm and you've got nothing to disprove that. But, hey, you got his money. So... This is a good ending, but they got there in kind of an unusual way. Ed, Eric, Richard, thanks for sending it from penlive.com, and John Bogue wrote that. Court orders return of $300,000 that state police seized during a Pennsylvania traffic stop, but over technicalities arising from the stop itself. Questions or comments, put them below. Those talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. The cost of living is going up and the chance of living is going down.